Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal, where you can see once again I'm joined by Team News and Ticks over in Germany for our weekly show. How are you getting on, mate? All good? Yeah, well, all good. Just, you know, a couple of days break in football, which feels like forever when you've had multiple games every day, but back at it tomorrow. But yeah, all good. We say tomorrow, but of course this is being pre-recorded again. And just to flag to everyone, we've both of us have been getting comments from you guys saying, can you not pre-record the shows? It's good to do it on the day. And we both 100% agree. And I think once Team News and Ticks is back from Germany, then I think we'll definitely start doing that. I think maybe we'll do the first half live for you. And then obviously the second part, which you can always get down to in the description, the link to Team News and Ticks' Patreon will be, uh, won't be live. But I think that's probably going to be the plan going forward. But while Team News and Ticks is in Germany and you've got relying on German hotel Wi-Fi or his phone signal live, a live broadcast isn't really the way to go. So we've both heard what you're saying about doing it as pre-recorded but unfortunately this week we've had to do it again because team news and ticks is changing hotels tomorrow or today by the time you're watching it on friday ahead of the big england game on saturday so it's needs must type thing so again if anything's been missed if arsenal have signed ricardo calafuri by the time you're watching this show which i don't think is going to happen i'm pretty confident of that uh then that's the reason we haven't spoken about it in that term is because we're recording at 4.15 on Thursday, even though you're going to be watching this on Friday. And as I said, same format as always. First half on this YouTube channel, second half, go down into the description. You can find the link to Team News and Ticks' Patreon. Click on that in the second part of the show, which is going to be you know, full of questions that have been sent in to him. Uh, you can listen to it on that link and sign up to the Patreon as well. OK, so, yeah, moving away, moving hotels tomorrow or today. Mate, what a uh, what a mad week it's been in the world of England and the Euros. Are you expecting anything, anything different on uh, on Saturday night with that big, big game against Switzerland? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've seen the reports about us going to a back three slash back five, depending on how you look at it. And I think there's loads of positives. I've always thought England's best performances under Southgate have pretty much been in a back three, back five. Um so, look, I, I mean, I'll say we, we can't get much worse and we could probably go and lose 4-0, but we can't really get much worse from, from what we've done. So if it is to be the back five, and I personally haven't checked yet, I never asked for, the, for anything too early. Um, I'll probably find out tomorrow. But today, as people are listening to this, um, but I, I, would, I would welcome a back five because playing, or three, but because playing the way we're playing, we are not being this Swiss team. It's, it's funny. So I've looked at the odds. I make Switzerland favourites. I've looked at the odds and England are, are quite big favourites. It really, really shocked me. Um, Wait, is that an, is that English bookmakers or is that a, is that like Europe wide? Surely not well, in Europe they wouldn't have England down as favourites for that. England are favourites for the tournament. But again, is that just the English bookmakers? Yeah, they're they're pretty, no, no, they're pretty like the way I the I use betting exchanges, which are a bit different, but it's mm. um it's weight of money and they're, they're sort of not worldwide products, but pretty worldwide. Where if gambling's legislated there you can use it yeah. and and yeah England I'm not sure if they're still tournament favourites I'm pretty sure they are but that'll be mainly because of the draw once oh, Spain yeah. or Germany win one of them will be favourites I think yeah. But, but yeah England are big big favourites for the game I think they're like 1.6 to, to go through in the, like they're 2.3 to win it during the game and, and uh, to, to go through um, they're, they're like 1.6 which is what three to, two, two, 2 to 3 on this is mental that's so mad. I mean, there's literally nothing, nothing to back that up in terms of what we've seen from the football so far. I hope, I hope they're right. And I keep sort of pinning my hopes on the fact that Bellingham's, that moment just suddenly sparks this revival. And like you say, I like, I like back three for this because you've got to do something. You can't keep playing the same players in the same system that hasn't worked at all and suddenly expect it to start working. It's not going to. And this Swiss team are too good. They're too well set up. They're too well drilled. They've got too good to players, as they've shown. They, they, they will they will comfortably beat England if they play well in England players they have been playing. So he's got to do something different. So I like the idea of going to a back three, um, getting Jude and Foden behind Kane, um, wing backs. Maybe, maybe if you bring Trent in on the right hand side, you play Walker as the right side centre back, Saka over on the left. You know, just something a little bit different, and it might spark something that we desperately need. Yeah, if I was to guess a team, it'd be exactly what you just said. Um, my my only slight worry with that, and not I mean it's an Arsenal fan thing as well, but they play that is it Ndoy on the right wing who it, it's quick, very and so Saka might have to do some defensive duty, but I guess with it, it'll be Konsa on the left edge behind him, 
they, they might be he can he can pass him on um and then hope the others cover uh Imbolo. Yeah. but i mean it'll be as you said they're very well drilled switzerland so the tactical battle um will be will be a very key one i think if you if you go through the individuals you'd say england's a better but it will be a, a key key tactical battle and a systematic battle and I'm not sure I fancy that's in that. But as I said, I'd give us a lot more chance with a back three, back five than than I would with the nonsense we were serving up already. And not that he's ever been there, but it gets Foden off the left wing because it's just a it's just a void there because he either refuses to play there or when he does, he's he's not a left winger. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right, let's talk about Arsenal, shall we? Um I don't know if you've seen this yet. You probably have. Um Mikel did a a, a good interview with James Ollie over in Marbella sort of previewing well just the summer it's ahead of the US tour and everything like that and um he was speaking about stuff like myself and James Benj and our Inside Arsenal Extra Time show yesterday we're talking about what he had to say about his new contract um or the contract talks but he also spoke about transfers and it's quite interesting what he said he was asked about um if this sort of suggestion that Arsenal are looking for one or more attacking players to help make the difference. And he says, we are looking to improve in every possible department with the new regulations. There are certain things we have to respect and be conscious of. And then obviously the Euros and Copa America are slowing everything down. Hopefully now it is going to pick up a little bit. He was asked how active he thinks Arsenal are going to be. He says, I think both ways, players coming in, going out, there are things that we have to improve. That's for sure. And we are going to try, but the market's tricky. We have been very aggressive and we are very determined and we have a clear idea of what we want to do. It will come down to finding the right agreements at the right time. So that's quite interesting. When he talks about that, he says we have been very aggressive. Now, obviously, nothing's happened yet in terms of transfers, apart from David Rye, which was which was announced yesterday, which we'll talk about. But um, the fact he's saying they've been very aggressive, yet nothing's done, suggests, you know, there's been an awful lot, which there would have been an awful lot going on behind the scenes right now and what did you make when you sort of saw what Mikel had to say about the transfers and where Arsenal are right now in the um in the window yeah I mean I think logically most people thought it would be into July both for PSR and because of the tournaments going on we've seen news pick up the more teams that have gone out so obviously we're going to talk about Calafiori later but the news picked up once Italy were, were no longer in the tournament really mm-hmm. and and I think that that's going to be the way um, as I say, I know Arsenal identified players that that they would they were wanted, and how aggressive we've been with them. Obviously, what's been going on behind the scenes is is kind of hard for anyone to know how aggressive we've been with them. I guess you have to take um, Arteta's word for it. But also, Arteta is a big, big fan of profiles rather than, not rather than names, but it's like say say Calafiori. He wasn't initially on the initial. Li- um, list of targets but if you look at the profile he's basically the exact same profile as the three players that that were so it's when when he says aggressive does it mean that if someone who wasn't on their list fits into that that mold they will go for them or does it mean that they've completely identified their targets and they're going like like a straight arrow for them i I interpret it as the second but you know, everyone's free to interpret state statements differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you make of Can of Fury? It's an interesting one, I think. I mean, there's no way that he he's someone that they've signed on the back of three good year performances for. Well, not they haven't signed because obviously they're not done it yet. But they're maybe trying to sign on the back of three decent performances for Italy at the Euros. Now he's someone obviously they they would have scouted heavily and, and known well, you know, been well aware about what he's doing for Bologna and stuff before the Euros. I mean, he's, he ticks a lot of boxes when it comes to a sort of Arsenal, Edu, Arteta type signings. When you look at his age, he's versatile. Um, defensively, you know, he's very, very strong. He's a powerful guy. Um, and he's, a, he's an interesting signing. And he was of, he was in an awful Italian team. He was the standout player um, for them during the tournament as well. You know, I, it, it wasn't... <laughs> I mean, laughing about it for the last day or so, that in, in a window where all the talk is about who Arsenal are going to sign in the sack, they go they could end up going out signing a left-sided defender first first out of the blocks. It does make me laugh. But um, it's uh, it's an interesting sign. I think it's one... I think it's an exciting one if they do get it over the line. Yeah, I mean, the, the only slight concern, and it's not been bad the last year or two, his injuries. He had a horrific injury when he was younger, um, which people that know more about medicine than me 
um, say was a, like a, a one-off. They they sort of you never see them in their potential career enders. Uh, enders, sorry, that that would be the only worry. But in terms of his ability, looks good. And it, it's funny, I've seen a lot of people go our oh, typical go and sign a defender when everyone thinks we need attackers. But as I, as I said, when I was given that list of targets, which I put out at the start of May, I think it was, or some point in May, there was three left-sided centre-backs on it. Um, so for those that haven't seen it, it's been out there for ages now, it's Murillo, Bramthwaite and Hatto. So Calafiori is, I'm not saying he's the same, but he's a left-footed centre-back that could play in that left-back role and tuck in how we use Kirior and to a lesser extent Tommy towards the end of the season. Mm. Um, so I, I, it wasn't one that I'd ever thought of us signing, to be honest, but when I saw the links, I was like, yeah, it fits like a glove with the profile that they're trying to achieve. It was actually funny. A, a Liverpool fan said to me maybe a week before the the uh, like the like links with us broke, he said, uh, is there any interest in you and Calafiori? Because he seemed, seemingly would suit you perfectly. He said, I want us to get, it, get him, but he seemed like too perfect for Arsenal. And I said, well, I've not heard anything. But again, the profile fits. And then I said a week or so later, it, it comes out that we're potentially really close to signing him. So it, it was one that just completely fit, fits in with what, what we identified. But as you said, it wouldn't have been off the back of, of just three games in the, in the Euros. I've got a message here from Justin uh, Credible, who first of all says, thanks for the concern, Charles. All good here in Kingston, Jamaica, waiting to hear the full assessment. Damage in the island. This is what I was talking about yesterday. I was passing on my best wishes to the West Indies after a horrible damage caused by Hurricane Beryl. But he says, um, if this Calafuri bid comes true, how do you see Mikel using him in our team? And I've spoken about this bit in the last couple of shows I've done because I think it's really interesting. When you look at him, obviously, he can play left-sided centre-back. He can play left-back. Unless something happens with Gabriel, though, there is no, there is no slot as in a sort of starting position at the start of the season anyway, for and that left-sided centre-back, but there certainly is for a left-back. So, I mean, I, I look at him, if he does come in, it's definitely much more of a sort of left-sided, you know, a left-back role in the team. But, you know, Arsenal's sort of, it's not just your classic full-back role, is it? But, well, I mean, when you see if this this sort of thing's happened, how do you think the sort of setup of Arsenal's defence could change should he come in? Yeah, I think on a, on a team sheet, as you look at it, when it's printed on Sky Sports, TNT, wherever you watch your football... He will be listed as the left back with with Gabriel, left centre back Saliba and Ben White. But in reality, they want someone that can basically essentially make a back three and then Ben can go and wonder as he did in the in the second half of the season. First half of the season and maybe the year before that, it was more Ben tucking into the right side, Saliba could be in middle and Gabriel being the left centre back and, and Zinchenko going to wonder. So Arteta does like that and he, he loves that. The ability to to switch dynamics quite easily, and this is what I think is very interesting about Calafiori is that in a game, if that if he's the one that tucks in and Ben is is wondering and it's not working for whatever reason, I think Calafiori could we could do the opposite. So, but within in game management, say so where with with Timber, you could kind of get him as the left centre back, but you could definitely get him doing the inverted thing, but the left centre back wouldn't be as as tight. I think with, with Calafiori, he looks like he has the profile to do both and in-game or even within like one attack, it could be Ben wondering. And as long as that relationship's good, it could be then Ben sits back and, and uh, forms part of the back three and Calafiori goes goes wondering. Mm. I think he's a, he's a slight bit of a unicorn profile in that sense where he is a proper defender, but he, he, he can play and he will be able to join in. Yeah, I think his attributes look very, very, very appealing in terms of what Arsenal could do. I remember you talking about... Um, the when you're talking about Gerald Hatto and when Arsenal was sort of talking to him and having to sort of convince him that, that you wouldn't be coming in as a left back, you know, you, yes, you might be down on the team sheet as a left back type position, but you're going to because of the way we play and with Ben t- tucking into midfield, it's very much a sort of left sided centre back role, and it's like exactly the same, wouldn't it? You'd sort of envis- envisage for Califuri. Yeah, yeah. As I said, the profiles of the of the three players I just named could all play play that role, hmm. and they're they're obviously brought out for different reasons, but it was it was pretty clear. Well, I mean, I was told it, but once you look at the targets, it was kind of pretty clear that what he sort of wanted. And I think Calafuri probably like can do both roles better in terms of like the others you'd imagine. Yeah, they were ball players, but they were more going to be just a defender. Whereas, whereas I think Calafuri probably has a bit more scope to interchange with Ben in that Ben can sit back and and he can do the wondering. 
Cool. All right. Look, Justin, by the way, thank you very much for the uh, for the message. And I'm glad that all is good with you guys in Kingston. I hope um, anyone, everyone else over in the West Indies is doing OK after the, uh, the hurricane that came in. So thanks for getting in touch, Justin. Right. I wanted to talk to you about this. This mysterious German footballer that everyone seems to be talking about that Arsenal could potentially sign this summer, uh, which has just been making me laugh. Just the, Did you see the video of the um, the guy setting up the, uh, was it the cars? Oh, yeah. George Gendu, I think his name is George something. Yeah. Setting up the cars, it just was making me laugh. It's like if that, I mean, I, I have no idea if that's legit or not or what, or what the deal is with it, but I was just thinking if that was legit, then that's probably the last deal he's going to get off that guy, given that he then just shared the the video of him uh, all over all over the internet. But um, yeah, so John, John has got in touch with this. So with the news coming in of the mystery German we're looking to sign, who would your ideal transfer be? I think Sane is back up to Saka would be incredible. But Lisa Musiala there, he could be the one to leave to seek more minutes. But um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on. We'll, we'll talk about the sort of our, our dream German signings for a laugh. But what, what do you know about this mysterious German? Because I have to admit, I have, I know nothing about it i've seen it but i haven't got anything to really add information wise but you spoke about it didn't you on your uh, on your patreon recently yeah so obviously i'd seen the video from george completely ignored it didn't think anything of it like he's a marketing guy and i thought if he actually wanted to hide it because he kind of bleeped the arsenal but it went oh bleep like if you really wanted to bleep it out you could have just bleeped the whole word and no one would have been none the wiser it could have been any team so I thought, oh, it's just a market employer. And then I saw Jeff Arsenal. I think it's just that Jeff Arsenal mm. uh, mentioned it. And obviously, I don't know how many years ago I might be doing with this service, but about 10 years ago, he was the, the sort of go-to guy on Arsenal Twitter for like ITK stuff. So, you know, you kind of have to take a bit of notice of it, but I still didn't think much of it because Jeff's not really been uh, active, shall we say, in the last the last few years. So I thought, okay, whatever. Like, I'm not going to completely ignore it, but I'm not going to go chasing it. And then my main best transfer source just uh, messaged me out the blue. wasn't wasn't hadn't been speaking to him, and he just messaged me and said like, "There's legs in this German thing." And I reply, I had my phone in my hand. I was actually sitting in the laundrette to give some boring context. So I had my phone in my hand, and I replied within probably a quarter of a second, saying "Who?" And uh, I didn't hear from him for 24 hours. And then he got back to me the next day and he said, look, I just, I can't let it, I can't let the name get out at the moment. It can't, it can't come out. Um, so I'm sort of none the wiser. I have heard from other people since the name, but I kind of don't want to put it out there because I just don't believe it, the name I've heard. Um, yeah, I've heard a name as well, but again, I'm not putting it out because I just don't know if it's, I have enough, I have no sense if it's right or not. And so I wouldn't, I would never put it out at this stage, but I've heard a name. It's just, it is quite a funny story. I just think this. So there's, you always get a story like this in the transfer window, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. And I imagine we've both heard the same name because one of the people I've heard it from, I know, knows you very well. But um, yeah, I just, I can't see it being that player. So I am clueless. I am, to, to kind of get onto the second part of this question, I had hoped it was Kimmich because I love Kimmich. Yeah. I, I mean, we were both at the, the buying game, especially the away one, where forget the goal, obviously scored. Forget the goal. He was the best player on the pitch by so far. It, it was crazy. It was like he was unpressable. Like you'd, we were sitting up a tier. I don't know where where the media were, but like you can see that I don't really like up a tier, but you can see the whole pitch so well. It's like looking at a chessboard. Mm. And there was times our, our pressing was so good, and we box him in, and you think, oh, they're they're done here. We're going to get the ball back one way or the other. And he would find a pass or he'd wriggle out of it. And I'm like, how has he done that? I I, I think he's exceptional, but. I'd hoped it was him. It'd be, and actually, I. So when I got that message about the German being true, I chased everyone I've ever spoke to within Arsenal, be it players, staff, journalists, anyone I could speak to, and and I said, oh, like I said the same thing. I hope it's Kimmich. No one knew, mm. and uh, but all I did get back is, oh, it, it, we don't know, but if it is, the, the one that makes the most sense would be Kimmich to play at six because he's he's made it more than known. He doesn't see himself as a right back and he wants to play at six. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of obstacles, obstacles of him, his wage being the main one. I have since been told that it's definitely not him. Um, but I don't know when, when people are trying to hide a name so much, are there, is someone saying it's definitely not him? Just Just trying to conceal it. I don't know. But yeah, I've since heard 
uh, can I say where from? Mm, I can't really say where from, but yeah, I've since heard it's not him. Yeah, the thing with Kimmich, and and I agree one hundred percent. I think look, I think he's a great player. I think he'd be brilliant. I is he? I I don't I don't know if it's just me, but I just don't see him as a six. I know he sees himself as a six, but I'm not sure if I see him as a six in this Arsenal system. Yeah, would you? Would you be? Do you think he's he could play that role in this system? with Rice and Odegaard ahead of him, do you think it'd be perfect for it? I just, I don't know if I'm just not, I just can't really envisage it as much as just an out and out proper central midfielder, if you see what I mean, which might sound a bit weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally, I think I, I think he uses the ball well enough to, mm-hmm. to be able to play that. He very rarely loses it. He'll have the the power of, of Rice at eight. Um, and then obviously Martin gets for a shift. He doesn't, he doesn't do it very quickly, but he gets for a shift. So there's running power all around him. Um, and also, as we spoke about earlier, if Ben goes wondering, who better to fill in at right back? Yeah, like, as in, not as in an actual right back. But you know what I mean, if we get caught on the counter and someone has to shift over to right back, we've seen Party do it and look like he's running in treacle. Whereas with him doing it, you've potentially got one of the best right backs in the world covering a right back when it's 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 not his job. I, I would be a, a big big fan of it, but mm-hmm. that said, I, I don't think it's him. Yeah. Um... So moving on to this question from John, um, I suppose you probably already answered it there when he said, "Who would the idea um, uh, with the news coming out? We're looking to sign. Who would your ideal transfer be?" As Sane, um, uh, he says Sane. So, but your so your ideal one would be Kimmich. I don't know. I, like I said, I've just for some reason got reservations in my head about Kimmich, Kimmich playing as a six for us. I wouldn't be against it. Um, I think I would. Who would I go for? <sighs> I think I'd probably go for Sane. I really like Sane. I think he's fantastic, Sane. I still think he's got lots to give. And I think, yeah, you could add that right-sided explosive option to the attack to to sort of rotate with Saka. I think I'd probably go Sane over Kimmich, but it would be it'd be toss of the coin type thing. You know, either I wouldn't say no to either of them, to be honest. Yeah, uh a fam a Sane's family still live in England by by all accounts as well. Um which is you know, another another thing that could point towards him being the one that, that comes back. It's funny you've seen all the the, the Twitter detectives, and I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, I've taken part in it as well. And they go, "Look, oh, who's got what car, and what reason could it be this guy?" And like, you find that there's ten players that there's there's valid reasons or valid uh, you know hypotheses that it could be them. But yeah, one of the Sane ones is I'm pretty sure his wife still. I don't know if she is English actually, but I'm, I've read that she still still lives in England. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's good mates as well. You know, he respects our setter a lot from his time in Manchester City as well. Um, so yeah, when, it's it's a funny. One. I, I'm looking forward to seeing if this actually sort of materializes into anything. It would be it would be a classic transfer window story uh, should it happen. Uh, right, David Raya made his move permanent. Well, he did it a long time ago, but it was uh, it was confirmed finally yesterday after a little bit of a delay uh, but it has now been announced that he has signed he said Look, after a year unknown as a gunner I can finally say I'm an Arsenal player for the coming years I'm excited to see what the future holds but always living um, in and enjoying the present it's a dream come true to be here and I want to thank you all for the support you've given me already in the last year and Mikel was uh, obviously very delighted to have him on as well said he's a big presence in our dressing room we are really pleased to keep working with him we know he'll take the strong foundations he put in place last season and build on them in the years to come and they will enjoy more success with us so yeah finally confirmed David Wright is an Arsenal player no surprise there was it It was always going to happen just waiting for the announcement and uh, yeah it's finally arrived yeah I mean uh, it's as you said it was it was never not going to happen and we've known that for a long time it was interesting like i was wondering how long they're going to leave it because technically he brentford would have been having to pay his wages of course they obviously wasn't but as of the first he was no longer an arsenal player because the loan would have ended so the longer they left it it would have been like well he's either having the brentford having to pay him or he's actually done it and it's just not been registered for whatever reason mm-hmm. um but yeah i mean as, as we said it was always going to happen do you know why the uh delay in the announcement was that annoyed me because it made me look stupid no, I don't know, but it's classic Arsenal. It happens all the time. It happens not just Arsenal, all football clubs. So it's all ready to push the button, then one little thing happens, and and it ends up getting pushed back twenty four hours or so. So, but um, no, I don't know exactly what it was. But um, I was hoping that they would something would give it away that they'd pushed it um, because when like the same thing happened when we signed him. He'd done all these interviews and stuff on the Friday, 
and he said that I'm looking looking forward to in his interview. He said something along the lines of I'm looking forward to doing my first training session with the lads, and then they didn't announce it till the Monday. And obviously, with that, he said in his interview, I'm looking forward to the first training session. But they they announced him with a load of training pictures. And it's like, hang on, you just said you've not done any training yet. Okay. We'd obviously done three or four days, three or four sessions already. Um, and I was hoping there'd be something in this announcement, but the video he put out, and I don't know if this is by design, but it made me laugh. He's in a room with like, there's nothing, there's not even a clock behind him. It's just a blank wall. Uh, it just made me, it's probably a complete coincidence, but it just made me laugh. Yeah, no, and they've done no, they've done no media for it or anything like that. You know, obviously he's away at the moment anyway, but um, they did, yeah, it was no big media or anything like that. It was just a, just a, just a few quotes, but I don't know, but there's so many things that they have to line up with everything for, for it to get the green light for it to be announced. And I don't know what suddenly caused a little bit of a delay, but, but it's done and uh, it was always going to happen. And now it's going to be interesting to see what else happens with the goalkeepers. Obviously, Carl Hein has agreed to stay, whether he goes out on loan, pro- which he probably will. We'll have to wait and see, but still business to be done when it comes to the goalkeepers now this summer. So that's one to, uh, one to keep an eye on got a comment here from scott and this was actually without me even putting out anything about um uh because the way this you know this show came about this week we sort of done it and i had, didn't have time to actually ask people for questions but he's got in touch there's probably one for you and t and at and i get it's all about timing but how does our focus swap from sesco to calafuri he plays in a position we already have a lot of cover for i think either zinni or kivio are all set to leave because if you bring in calafuri on top of the two lads who can potentially lower any price we get for them teams will know we have to sell on that side especially with kt back in the mix too also i'm liking the look of <laughs> i don't know cauliflowery as well charles uh, he looks like a proper 90s italian defender in a mix of nesta and maldini um yeah in terms of how it shifts well you know you've just got lots of different irons in the fire when it comes to the summer anyway so it's not just a sudden shift it's not like they suddenly thought we missed out on sesco let's sign a defender it was you know that's all the irons were in the fire they were juggling the things that happened it just happens to be that Calafuri is the one that has come out and emerged with serious interest on the back of Sesco. It's interesting in terms of what you do with the defence now, in terms of players who leave. Like I was talking to James Benj about this on Inside Arsenal Extra Time, and I cannot see a way that at least one player doesn't go if, and it is still an if at the moment, that Calafuri does come in. And it feels like Kivior, doesn't it? Because Just because they're so similar in terms of what the positions they'll be playing in and what they would bring to the team that it does feel like if you bring in Calafuri that that it kind of feels inevitable to me that Kivio will end up end up moving on. Yeah, as as you said, their profiles are more similar. Zinni is a bit different, so it gives yeah. you a different option. Um, and also, we've just seen more links with with Kivio. He's been obviously there was teams talking to him in January. Mm-hmm. There's been links again um, this this summer. There's there's rumours his his wife isn't what well, would rather be back in Italy. Um, so just again because of the links it would seem Kir- Kirio is, is more likely to go we've actually not seen many links for Zinni apart from company going back to Bayern and people spec or going to Bayern sorry and people speculating that he might want to take his ex-teammate with him yeah. there's actually not there's, not there's not been a serious link with, with Zinni going anywhere whereas with Kir- Kirio there has so yeah you'd imagine it would be one in one out on that front um and but the, it's a valid point about lowering the fee because I actually saw, I mean, it might have been a nonsense Italian source. I don't know how good they are. I can't even remember them. But an Italian newspaper said that Juventus were looking at Curio and could get him for as little as 15 million. And it yeah, is one of them things. million euros as well. Euros, yeah. Yeah. And it is one of them things. If we do bring in a, a replacement first, then teams will go, well, you need to get rid of him. It, it's obvious. So they're going to lowball. I mean, I'm not Kirill's biggest fan, to be honest. Um, I, I've not seen much of him while he's been at the club. Just made me think, yeah, here's a player I want long term. But to lose money on him seems when everyone was like, we got him for a steal, was the general consensus in football. So then him, look, he's not done well for me. Some people do think that, but he's not been bad by any stretch of imagination. So to lose money on him seems seems a bit mad to me. But it, it looks like it's a position we might be putting ourselves in. Yeah. I agree. I think it's mad. If you lose money on Kivio, when you sign him for, what, 21 and a half, whatever it was. And I think he's done well. I don't, he's not been brilliant. He's not blown me away by any means. But I think he's a solid defender who has grown into the team. I think he's, he's had issues, no doubt about it, when he settled. I think the language was a, was an issue. I don't, you know, he didn't come in and just settle straight away. I think he struggled a lot to adapt. But I think he's certainly shown last season that he can when you need to call upon him, he's a solid enough defender. And I think he's done pretty well in the Premier League at a top club like Arsenal. 
so I just don't see how you can possibly lose money <laughs> on that deal. When you sign him for what you sign him for, he's done well. How can you lose money on that? But I agree, it will it might prove difficult, especially if you're trying to sell him back to Italy, where we know that clubs aren't exactly flush when it comes to, to big cash. But I would still think you've got to make some sort of money. That 50 million euros surely was utter nonsense, that that fee. I mean, that would, that would be remarkably low if that was the case. I think you've got to be at least looking to get your money back on him. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's, it's always funny with this situation, though, because you get the flip side of it where you sell a player first and people go, oh, well, now everyone knows we've got money. And it's, it's like you can't. I don't. There isn't an ideal way to do it unless somehow you could magically do both deals at the exact same time, which yeah. I guess is humanly possible, but but quite unlikely. But I feel like one way or the other, you you know, you're, you're putting your, your back against the wall. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, well, that's it for today's show, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As usual, we're going to carry on, of course, with part two, which you can get to down below in the description. On uh, You can see the Patreon link. Click on that, and you can go and listen to part two of this week's show on there. But until then, everyone, I'll be back tomorrow to do my usual show. Anything you want me to talk about in that, you know what to do. Get into the comments with your questions, opinions, comments. And uh, myself and Team News and Ticks will be back next week to do it. And hopefully we'll have a little bit more news on Ricardo Calafuri and any other transfer business that he's doing around. So until then, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.